Yeah, so I'm Will Clements. I'm one of the tutors in history here at Brasenose, and I'm a modern British and European historian. Um, hello, I'm Erin. I'm in my third year of studying history here at Brasenose. Um, I'm from Barnsley in South Yorkshire, and I am also the JCR's Access and Admissions representative. Cool. So what are your big areas of interest then? So I'm interested in quite a lot of things in the 19th century, uh, especially about what happens when cities grow and develop and a lot of people live there. So I'm interested in questions of housing, hygiene, environmental disaster, and also religion, which sort of fits in some of those. So what is history at Brasenose like? Um, well, um, one of the great things about history um, is that as in the course, <laughs> um, is that it's so um, broad. Um, and so while you get taught mainly in first year in college um, and you're able to kind of build up a rapport and a relationship with your fellow historians, not just in your year, but in the years um, above or below or whatever, um, you also get to go out to lectures and classes and then in your second and third year tutorials at other colleges and you get to meet so many different people um, and so I think the kind of flexibility in the style of teaching and the broadness of the course you can kind of get away with basically doing anything you really want to do within reason which is one of the things why I, reasons why I love it um, there aren't too many kind of requirements that you have to um, fulfill or anything there's no kind of really set modules um, so it's just super broad and super flexible so you get to meet so many people um, and study the things that you want to do and kind of get taught by the people that you want to get taught by um, so yeah super broad super flexible so history's got quite a strong tradition at Braze knows it's one of our larger subjects um, there are four of us who teach across the undergraduate here at Brasenos, covering a range of topics from sort of early medieval British history, uh, early modern global history, going from sort of Hawaii to Sri Lanka, and then all the way up to sort of 19th, 20th century uh, European history. In terms of the students, we admit about six or seven for history soul um, every year as well as about four or five for the joint schools, which is sort of history and politics, ancient and modern history, history and economics, and history and modern languages. So we have a good group every year. Uh, we try and teach all the first years in college for the first term, which means that we get to know everyone very well, very quickly, and it also means they get to sort of develop a bit of a social identity as historians at Brasenose. What was your first tutorial like? Oh... Uh, Probably looking back on it now as a third year, um, my academic performance was probably rubbish. <laughs> um, however, um, you know, like they expect, they don't expect you to be a perfect academic little package when you arrive at Oxford. I definitely remember feeling super nervous, um, as I think everyone does. It can feel really daunting, even when you're applying to Oxford, to think like, can I do this for three or four years? Just sit across the room from like, the world expert on this like period of history or this like element of whatever science is or whatever and like talk to them um and that you have to kind of just get past that because that does become your life for the next three or four years um but it is such kind of an invaluable experience um and i think looking back on kind of like that first tutorial and even like when you do meet new tutors you still get a bit of that like adrenaline nerves before every tutorial um, but looking back on that first one, I do remember just feeling like, like, yeah, probably some of the most nerves I've ever felt, <laughs> but there was kind of no reason to be, because as soon as I sat down in the seat, um, you know, the tutor was so kind of, um, understanding and really helped me, you know, um, engage with the, engage with the topic, engage with the conversation, kind of relax the nerves. Um, and then when you do one, the others just kind of then fall into place and week by week you get so much more comfortable talking with your tutorial partners with your tutor and kind of putting ideas out there and getting more confident in your own voice so perfect tutorial so the tutorial system um is a sort of a combination of factors for a good tutorial i might have a few things rattling around my head of what i want to cover in the hour discussion um so make sure that everyone understands the topic 
But the other half of it is what the students have to do uh, before they come into the room. So each week we'll set a reading list with a ton of stuff on it that you won't be able to read in a week. So you have to be selective and sort of pursue things you're interested in uh, within a wider topic. And then write an essay, which you sort of either bring along to the tutorial or we mark in advance. So the perfect tutorial is when students have really clicked onto a subject and they come in absolutely bubbling with enthusiasm and my few things I have to tick off. Sometimes I don't even get through them because the students are leading discussion. Um, I've had days before I've had what is in theory the same tutorial lined up five times in a row and they all look completely different. Um, so yeah, the perfect tutorial for me doesn't exist because it's based on what the students do in each individual case. Amazing. Um, so is there anything particularly strange or amusing that's happened in a tutorial that sticks out to you? Mm. So I'm a modern historian, so sort of thinking about relevance of history on contemporary affairs is sometimes uh, easier to do than some of my medieval colleagues. But even then, I have been surprised at quite how often our discussions will maybe mention contemporary figures or events. Discussion of Andrew Tate or Donald Trump creeps in every now and then. But it can be quite a helpful way to sort of... Uh, offer a window into understanding the past by seeing resonances or parallels with sort of contemporary society. What was it like, um, the transition from post-16 to Oxford University? Um, it was definitely difficult. Um, I think that, um, you know, one of the major things about going to university uh, more generally, but especially Oxford and especially like humanities at Oxford is just you kind of given free reign um, when you get to university, whereas at A level you're still kind of taught in the very like prescribed. You ha come to your lessons however many times a week, and we learn this set curriculum and whatever. And you're kind of very motivated to do kind of your homework and things like that. Um, when you come here, it's a lot of self motivation, um, and you're dealing with just bigger ideas, more interesting ideas as well. Like as much as more difficult it might get it gets all the more interesting as well. Um, you kind of, like I say, you get to completely, you know, you get to really, really choose and specialise into what your interests are um, and explore those, and that's encouraged by your tutors. You're not bound to what anybody tells you you have to learn. You're kind of just bound to yourself and how much effort you want to put in, how, much, how many things you want to learn, what are the things that you want to learn. Um, how niche do you want to make your degree? How broad do you want to make your degree? Um, so I think um, it is difficult in that aspect of, you know, self-motivation. You're kind of in the library, reading, producing essays. There's a higher expectation of the quality of the, you know, amount of time and effort you're going to put into things. But then at the same time, you get all the rewards for that. The feeling of accomplishment, the greater things you learn, you'd be reading things and like, wow, like this is so intelligent. I feel so smart right now um, when you can understand things and you get engaged in a really academic conversation with your tutors um, and your like, fellow students. Um, so yeah, I think that's another important thing to mention as well, that it's not just kind of the difficulty or that self-motivation. It's also the fact that when you get here, everyone loves their subject. And so the transition from a level, people might pick subjects, they kind of like them, they're not really that bothered maybe though, but you get here and everyone genuinely is in love with what they study and wants to be here and learning. And so the conversations you have, not just among the people that, um, with the people that do your subject, but people doing other subjects, you have such amazing conversations and then you look back and you're like, wow, I can't believe I just had that conversation. Um, about kind of academic things or about what they're studying at the minute and you get to learn so many things just by talking to other people as well. Um, so yeah, definitely a big change and definitely a big step up, but so uh, much more rewarding than I could ever have thought it would be. And then is there anything specific you'd recommend for anyone looking to apply to Oxford for history? Mm, I think... Um, Having like a, a, a broad historical like base knowledge is always good. Um, you kind of get to cover a lot of ground um, when you get here. And so while you know the tutors aren't really looking for 
you know, they're not looking for someone that knows everything about history. They're not looking for perfection. They're not looking for pre-made, you know, historians or academics. Um, I think having like a good historical awareness is probably an important thing in terms of the academic side of things, um, because it is just helpful when you get into conversations and tutorials, having that background of knowledge. Obviously, you do build that up over the three years. I know things now that I never would have known when I was applying. Um, but, you know, kind of maybe gives you just a head start on that first tutorial and could also help in like an interview situation if you're asked a question that you don't really know the answer to, being able to have a broader understanding of history, both the events of history and the kind of major themes, things that historians talk about um, is always mm -hmm. useful because it kind of, you can use that to help you think on your feet and think on the spot, which is a lot of what a tutorial is as well. What do you look for in an ideal candidate? So this is a really hard question to answer because there is no ideal candidate and no formula which we could apply to try and get that. But I suppose what we're really interested in seeing is historical enthusiasm. You know, what is it when you're putting together your UCAS form that has made you decide to do history for three or four years of your life? What is it that sort of sparked the historical interest? What have you been reading perhaps outside of schoolwork or what has it been that you're doing at school that's got you interested? And we can see this through your UCAS form, uh, through your admissions test, your written work, and then if you're invited to interview at your interview. So if we do invite you to interview and we're talking with you, it's not a test of what you know, but rather sort of how you think. So we want to see people who are very sort of analytically strong, um, who can display sort of historical imagination for why things might have happened in the past, but also people who are flexible. You know, we want to have someone who can respond to new ideas and perhaps even change their mind about something, which is really important to sort of know whether we're going to be able to teach you if you get here. Cool. And what's been your favorite topic that you've done so far? Oh, oh my gosh. Um, well, I've kind of done a bit of everything um, during my degree. Um, really surprisingly, I loved a paper that I did in my first year on um, kind of um, Renaissance Europe because I'm, you know, really into modern history. So kind of doing the early modern things was something that I'd never even, that I'd never done before. Um, and I remember going to, um, uh, going to like a tutorial where we talked about kind of humanism and, um, and like art and new art techniques that were going on in like Renaissance Europe, which was crazy um, and so much fun to learn about. Um, I think um, one of my favorites probably been did a paper on the Middle East in the Age of Empire, which was very, very interesting um, and kind of brought me more into the 20th century with what I was studying, which is where my interests lie. Um, and then at the minute, I'm doing a paper on um, kind of post-colonial India and the state building and the role that different individuals and kind of the Congress party played in, in India's um, state building and, and, and um, culture and modernization um, after empire, which has been really interesting so far. Um, yeah, I don't think I could pick just one because I've learned just so many different things that were also interesting for their different reasons. How has the history course across the university and across Brazenose changed in recent years? Yeah, so across the university, what we try and do is we make sure that everyone studies a good chronological and geographic breadth. So everyone has to do at least one medieval course, one early modern course, one modern course, and then some British history, some European history and some world history. So that's been in place for a while now. What's changed is the number of options, especially in world history, which we can offer now. So there's been quite a new popular paper where you get to learn all about the Mongols, for example, or sort of 19th century Japan. In terms of the wider university, we've made some new faculty hires recently in black British history, uh, in the history of LGBTQI, uh, and also in environmental history, which means that the course is only going to develop and expand uh, in future years.
I was saying, don't you think this is like the Lady Di interview from Channel 4 <laughs> um, thingy? There's a lot of similarities. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>